Hey guys, quick question. How would you go about learning a new language? And now imagine how would a professional linguist go about the same challenge? What techniques would they use? Could they pick it up a lot faster than us? Do they have secret strategies up their sleeves? Intrigued? Me too. Today, we're pulling back the curtain and diving deep into the journal of a linguistic pro to uncover the answers. Are you ready for the journey? Well, let's get started. All right, let's just spill the beans on Professor Richard Schmidt. My name is Richard Schmidt. I teach at the University of Hawaii. Got a massive stack of linguistic papers under his belt. If you bet someone who can effortlessly pick up a language, it's him. But plot twist, Richard just off to Brazil with practically zero knowledge about Portuguese. Imagine lounging on the golden sands, with crushing, sipping coconut water on the iconic beach in Brazil but mostly just nodding, smiling, and not understanding a thing. He's a fish out of water at that moment. But Richard, he's not one to give in. Being the bookish type, he figured a traditional language is be one heard. Well, some of his goals, picture this. The first lesson, their daily introduction, which is great because you do a lot of introduction in Brazil. If you know, you know. But lesson two, teacher asked him about his marital status. He said no, then got a fraction because they were practicing affirmative. <laughs> so suddenly he's married because of grammar, classic. But as all language learners know, real life isn't a classroom. Richard ever the adventures dive headfirst into Brazil's bustling street life. But mingling outside isn't like answering questions in class, people talk fast, idioms fly, and sometimes you just wish you had some titles. But every cloud has its own silver lining. For Richard, that's the super cool Brazilian crew he met at the cafe, week 17 reads. Well, this is sidewalk cafe, practically my living room now. Writers, actors, everyday languages. Tough catching up every word, but feels like home. Can you imagine the joy when words started making sense and strangers become friends? Fast forward to a special evening, deep in the conversation, Rachel found out one of the local friends called to New York home for five years and even acted on Broadway. But never for once they switched to Portuguese and even after their revelation, they continue to vibe in Portuguese. So from those early days of nodding, smiling, to evenings filled with laughter, stories, and deep connections, Richard's journey becomes less about getting the words right, but more about the world they opened up. From clumsy nods to comfortably speaking Portuguese, that's one heck of transformation. So how did he put it off? As Richard made leaps and bounds in his linguistic journey, there were moments left to him baffled, and others felt like unlocking secret achievements in a game. Richard's classroom experiences provides some head scratchers. He drilled the compound present, compound past perfect tense extensively, hours and hours, repetition after repetition. Logic says he should have been an expert, right? Yet he really used to them in his day-to-day -day interactions with locals. Well, on the flip side, the imperfect tense entered to the chat and made his mark. His journal vividly captures the essence. Doesn't that make you wonder, why some lessons stick, while others just floated by? Why lessons are painstakingly practiced to fit it away, while others merely brushed it upon, became second nature? Why? The power of noticing. So those grammatical tenses he was taught in classroom, but failed to acquire, were those he barely noticed. There were no traits of those grammatical tenses in his journal. He didn't record anything about them. But those tenses he actually mastered, he mentioned them a lot in his journal. And this tells us one thing, to truly acquire, to learn, to see, to hear them even many, many times may not be enough. You must notice them. The power of noticing goes beyond the classroom and spread around into his interactions with the locals as well. Rachel picked up the existential sentence using TER, which I have no idea what that is in Portuguese, but he picked it up in conversations by hearing it. To be more precise, he did more than just hear it, he noticed. So what did that mean? Well, it meant he was weaving these sentences into his dialogue as naturally as any local. Again, the power of noticing. The power of noticing could be found in corrective feedback as well. It's only those feedback that has been noticed 
have the power to push learners to correct their mistakes. If not, it goes one year in, another year out. And that's what happened to Richard. So there have been times Brazilians tried to correct Richard's mistakes in a subtle way. Richard failed to register them, and they backfired, making him even more confident in his incorrect form. Well, once again, these instances highlighted even more the indispensability of noticing. Throughout his journey in Brazil, it became crystal clear to Richard Passive absorption isn't the ticket to language mastery. It doesn't matter how many times you see or hear something, true acquisition lies in active observation, engagement, and above all, noticing. If Rachel's adventures teach us anything, it's this. To truly grasp a language, immerse yourself in it, but always keep your eyes and ears open, because the secret sauce is all in the noticing. Now we know that it's noticing makes all the difference, and here's a million dollar question for you. How can we notice more efficiently? Well, Professor Richard delved deep into this. He coined it the notice gap principle. It's like this aha moment when you finally was able to pinpoint what's missing in your understanding, and you make that your prime focus. Now some of you might be thinking, just hit me with the corrections. But the thing is, corrections can be vibe killers. They disrupt the flow and sometimes even your confidence. You tried your best, and you were wrong. And let's be real for a sec. Constantly relying on others correcting us, that sounds like a long shot. We need to make this process of correction more efficient. Urgently, we need to do so. How can we blend it into our learning seamlessly? Real food for thought. And then there's repeated exposure, a cornerstone of comprehensible input theory. It's like bathing in the language until they seep into the skin. But have you ever found yourself thinking, I've seen this word a zillion times, why can't I use it? It's always too familiar. I know it, but I just can't see it, conundrum. Some may argue why you haven't been supposed to enough, but deep down you know you have, so why? Well, maybe it's not about reputation, maybe it's not about whether you comprehend it or not, but more about the depth of your attention. It's not just hearing or seeing, it's about truly noticing. So if you're buzzing to find out how we can notice better, I bet you like this video right there. The main idea is to put for comprehensible output to notice better. If you are more on how we can notice more efficiently, hit the like button. If there's enough interest, I'll drop a follow-up video. Until next time, stay curious, keep noticing, and enjoy the journey of learning. Bye.